Having improved our understanding of a binary tree, let's discuss what a binary search tree is. A binary tree is a binary search tree if it satisfies two properties. Those two properties are that if something is in the left subtree of a node, then it is less than or equal to that value at that node. And if it is in the right subtree, it is greater than or equal to this. This is effectively that our tree is sorted in the sense that everything to the left of our node is less than it and everything to the right of our node is greater than it. So let's check that for this problem. Is everything in this left subtree less than six? Yes. And this works recursively. Is everything in this left subtree less than or equal to five? Yes. And now let's check the other property if everything in the right subtree. We have something over here that is in the left subtree of six, but the right subtree of five, that is five. Five is in fact between five and six, including both of those values. And over here on the right, seven and eight are both greater than six, so both of those also satisfy this property. Notice I have two different trees here on the exact same set of numbers that look totally different. In this first tree, the numbers are relatively well distributed and the height of this first tree is going to be two because the length of the longest path is either this path or it's that path or it's that path. There are three different paths, all of which go to leaves, which are of length two and they're the longest ones. However, in this last example, my height is one, two, three, four. So depending on how we construct our trees, we can have some radically different heights for our binary search trees. With this in mind, let's try and make a binary search tree out of some values. So here I give us a blank tree and tell us to assign the values to this tree. I want you guys to pause and try and do this yourselves there are several ways you can do this. I'm going to keep talking for a little bit to make sure that you definitely pause this video and that you actually try this. It won't take more than 10, 15 seconds to do it. Try and assign these values to the tree. All right, I think I filibustered long enough. Now let's try and do this. So one way you might have done this is you say we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight nodes. If we look at our values, I need that three values are less than whatever I put up here. And that is, those are the only values that will be there. So the value I have to put in this middle spot, because three of the values over here need to be less than it, and four of the values over here need to be greater than it, the only value that is possible to put up here would be 10. Let's see if we can do, do some similar reasoning. Over here, the only three values I can put there are four, seven, and nine. And if I look, I need one value less than V2 and one value greater than V4. So the only value that can go there is seven and under a similar set of reasoning, I must put four here and nine there. Now let's do look at the right. If I look at the right, if I go all the way over here, V5 is actually the maximum value because it is gr greater than V1 and then everything over here is less than it. So V5 must be the largest value. And now if I look, at V6, V6 must be greater than V1, but both V7 and V8 must be greater than it. So V6 must be my next biggest value of 13. I now have two values left and V7 has to be bigger than V8. So I only have two options. I must put 15 here and 22 there. And now let's just verify that we satisfy the property. 10 is bigger than seven and it's bigger than four. 9 lies between 7 and 10, so that seems good. On the right, 29 is bigger than 10. Everything over here is less than 29. 13 is less than 29. 22 is greater than 13. And 15 is between 22 and 13. So all of this seems to check out. So this is a valid way to assign these values. If you wanted to, another way we could have done this is we could have tried to identify what is the smallest value and find out where that has to be in the tree. That would have to be over here and then try to identify what is the next smallest value and then the next smallest value and then the next smallest value and repeat that until eventually we fill up the tree. That is another valid way we could have constructed this binary search tree. Now, something related to binary search trees that is a very reasonable place to start with methods is talking about how do you traverse the tree. This will be very reminiscent of your foundations class when you talked about graph traversal algorithms, things like depth first search and 
breadth first search. These are similar to what we're going to talk about. So we're gonna talk about the in order walk of a tree. The way we're going to do this is we're going to go to the left, then look at ourselves, then go to the right. Let's look at how that works in the code. I go to the left, go to the left, then would print out four, and then I would go to the right from four. I can't go anywhere, so I'm stuck. I go back up in my recursion tree, and I print out seven. I then go to the right and print out nine. Nine has no children, so I have to go back up. Seven is done now because I've gone to the left and to the right, so I go back up. Ten has gone to the left, so we print out ten. Now we go to the right. From here, we go to the left, and then we print ourselves because there is nothing to the left to go to. Then we go to the right. Going to the right, we then go to the left immediately if we can. So we go to 15. We then go to ourselves. There's nothing to the right, so we go back up. We already d went to the right from 13, so we go back up again. Then we go to 29. And if we look, we printed these vertices in sorted order. Convenient. So this is a useful graph traversal algorithm. And it's actually very straightforward to analyze because we are guaranteed to access every single node. So this runtime is going to be theta of n, where n is the number of nodes in the binary search tree. We are going to visit every node once and only once, and therefore the complexity will be dependent on the number of nodes exactly.